Here we go. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. I'm just going to share my screen. There we go. Um, so hopefully everyone can see that now. Um, yeah, my name is Jess Malcolm. I'm from Devon Biodiversity Record Centre. I'm the community ecologist. So I'll be um, giving you a quick introduction to DBRC and what we do and a bit about recording. So first of all, who are we? Um, we are um, an organisation. We collect, manage and make available records of wildlife. We're hosted by Devon Wildlife Trust, but we work with um, different partnerships across the county to deliver various projects. Our database is currently in excess of five and a half million records, and we keep adding to that um, frequently. Um, and we also manage the county wildlife site framework for Devon. So we have got over 2000 sites um, which are designated for their biodiversity value in the, the county wildlife site system and, and many more that are unconfirmed wildlife sites. Um, DBRC is one of a network of over 45 local record centres across the UK. And um, what we all do is um, our aim is to be a source of information that's of a known quality um, so that it can be it can all be relied on. DBRC is a um, runs as not for profit as well. So we focus on gathering these things. So species presence records so at the highest resolution we can and at the highest confidence. And we get those from various sources, um, which I'll, I'll talk about in a moment. Um, priority habitat data um, at sort of field scale from our surveys and land use data as well from remote sensing and um, some other techniques. Uh, site condition surveys. So that enables us to report on the state of the environment outside of statutory protected areas. Um, so those are like triple SIs and special areas of conservation. Um, we also collect NVC, um, so that's national vegetation and classification and habitat data and condition assessments. Um, through our surveys, particularly with our county wildlife sites monitoring and, and various other DBRT projects. So what we do there is we collate the best available data that we can, but Devon is a massive county and um, so it's a bit incomplete in, in its total coverage. And within our team as well, we've got some really, really good ecologists who've got um, great skills, so we can um, take part in training and skill sharing. Um, both with our volunteers and also um, to other people in the industry, for example, ecological consultants. Uh, this is a little graphic of, um, sort of how, how we see the data and, and how it works. So the data comes in and it's all kind of just bits and pieces sometimes. And then through our processes, um, you know, we can verify it, we can organise it, so it kind of becomes information. Um, and through that, we can then join it up to um, provide knowledge. And then that can lead to its use in, in various projects. We can see what, um, what we might need to do, how the data we've got might affect various areas and hopefully have a, a positive impact. So our aim is to use our, you know, this high quality data um, to provide the best evidence for informing you know, policy and protection and conservation projects across the county. Uh, this is a, a not particularly um, friendly graphic, but the only bits that really we need to focus on are the first section, so recording and collecting data um, and making sure that we're, we're getting the right data. Um, and then it goes through various processes um, to make sure that we are checking the quality and keeping it properly and analysing um, where we need to so that we can have the, the final output um, and making sure that we can, we can do that properly and make sure that the data that we receive turns into something that is usable for, for other people for various different reasons. So when our data does come in, um, we receive it from so many different people so a massive thank you to everyone who sends us in data and that are those are species recording groups so for example Devon birds or Devon moth group amongst amongst many others um, conservation professionals and ecological consultants also send us in their data um, as well as just individuals who are interested who may only send us in a couple of records or might send us in in loads and loads but the what, what it boils down to the the data that we need 
for, to, to have a, a record that, that works is the who. So who, who are you? Um, what did you see? Where did you see it? When? So that's the date. And with the where, um, it can be an address, but we generally work on grid references. And then also any notes that, that go with that record that might um, sort of increase the information that it can hold and um, make it more useful. So how do we receive data? We receive data in lots of different ways. Um, so for example, um, we've got um, an email like this. So this is uh, one I made up, but it's a, an example of a classic email. Um, so dear DBRC, I saw a hedgehog in my garden last night. Um, that's a very brief email, but actually um, along with the picture, it's got everything that we need. So we know who, um, here we've got a name. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think all my red circles have worked. Um, but we know where she's given us an, an address and that an, um, that address can lead to a good reference. She told us what she's seen and she sent us a photo of it. Um, I think it's quite difficult to mistake a hedgehog for anything else, but a photo always helps um, with ID. Um, we've got contact details from her. We know when, because we know that she saw it the night before she sent this. Um, and we know there's one of them and we can see, you know, that it's, a, it's an adult hedgehog. So that actually ticks off everything that, that we need to, to form a record. Um, she could also have sent it in on our website where you can send in individual records. Um, so that's our, our website there um, to log uh, wildlife sightings. So we also, and this is probably our, our favorite way, is receiving data on a spreadsheet because um, Although it may take the surveyor a little bit longer, it saves us loads of time at this end and we know it's, everything's in there in all the columns and, and um, it's got all the information. Um, so this is, um, this is actually my data from when I used to do bat surveys and I'd see a fox frequently on my way to and from um, bat surveys. So we've got the, the who and the contact would be with the email. We've got the where, the when, um, an English name and a scientific name, how many, and then we've got here the sampling method as a field observation. This kind of thing is, is a bit more optional, but for particularly if you're doing something where maybe um, you're using a slightly different sampling method, um, it can be useful to know. So that's, that's part of the, those comments. We still receive data through the post. Um, so for example, um, we ran a uh, project over winter looking at brown hair streak eggs and uh, for um, saving Devon's treescapes and we received lots of uh, paper records there. Um, these are the ones that take us probably the most time to input if there's a lot of information. And also using recording apps like iRecord. So um, iRecord is linked up with the um, with NBN which I will talk about a bit later um, but it's a way that you can record on your phone when you're out and about and um, your local record centre can also access those records as well. But um, our record is one where we know we can access the data, but if you do use a different recording app, it's worth checking where that data goes. There are lots and lots of different recording apps and um, some of it might just be a bit of a dead end with the data. So it's really good to know where that data is going, who can access it, who can share it to make sure um, that it's going to be used. And also checking out if they verify records so we know that, you know, that data is actually good quality as well. So once they come into us, they are sorted, um, verified. So all our records um, go through a verification process to make sure that uh, we're not getting um, the random species in random places, and then they're uploaded to our database. So that they are ready to um, go out in various forms, often maps. Um, so we've got here, um, this is part of the Brown Hair Streak project um, with butterfly conservation as well. And um, this is a project that, that we run, which is looking at waterfalls in South Devon. And we also do data searches as well. Um, and data searches are where we get some of our 
income um, because we do need to charge for data access. And that's because we don't get any government funding. Um, so all our work is like locally managed and funded through various partnerships um, and agreements and projects um, and services such as data searches. Um, and that's because collating all this data, managing it, um, and running all the, the many projects we do and looking um, at the wild, um, county wildlife framework all, all costs money. Um, and so that is why we need to um, charge for various things. Um, but we do work on a cost recovery basis. So any um, excess we make tends to just go into new projects. And so if we didn't charge, that would probably mean less data and data that's a lower quality, which is not what we're after at all. However, there are places that you can go to to find data um, elsewhere. Um, there's the Environment Viewer and Magic Map, which um, are the two topics that Tom is going to talk about um, in a little bit. Um, there's various apps. Um, there are so many different apps out there. Some of them um, let you see what, what other users are recording as well. But again, that same caveat with the apps and making sure that if you're contributing to them, that that data will actually be used and, and will go somewhere useful. And there's the NBN Atlas as well, which I mentioned. So that is where I record records go to. Um, so there's various different options as well. Um, so you might be thinking, well, with all this, you know, why, where does the BRT sit in there? And the BRT um, is Kind of the, the, the central place so for Devon and we hold the really high quality data so a lot of the data that you'll see on here has got conditional licenses on it which means that you can't use it for for various purposes although all of these are great resources if you're a community group and you're looking first just to kind of get an idea of what's around and, and what's there um, but generally they can't be used commercially or, or many elements of them um, you can find loads of information on all of these sites, but not necessarily all of the data um, that DBRT holds. And um, also a lot of the data that's on there is at a lower resolution than we actually have. Uh, so that's why people come to DBRT, because we have that really high quality data. And it's that data that can be used to, to, to make decisions and, and influence various things. So the NBN Atlas um, is the National Biodiversity Network Atlas, and the NBN itself has been running since about 2000. Um, so it took a little while for it to um, launch this. Um, it's actually a really good um, website where it's like a portal where you can go and have a look at various um, species in your area. And this is where all those records in iRecord go to. And so it looks, it looks like this um, when you go in. So you can explore your area and set a radius and it gives you loads and loads of information. So these are all, um, these are all records here from a central point um, within a five kilometer radius. And it gives you loads and loads of information. There's obviously some people around there who are um, fans of recording um, fungi um, and certainly some insects as well. Um, so you can see what, what you have in that area. Um, but there are some caveats. So this is a, an image from the NBN record, um, annual report from sort of 18 months ago or so. And it gives you a little bit of an idea of um, what the data, how it's sort of split. And a thing to note is that it's this bit here which is under a shared license at 86%. So that means that a lot of that can't be used um, for, for you know, various reasons. Um, you can obviously go and look at it if you're a community group and that's what we, we um, are encouraging you to do, um, but it can't be used commercially. Um, and then this 14%, which has got an open license, a lot of that is quite old. Um, so it's not particularly recent data. Um, but it is, as you saw from the previous slide, a really, really good starting point if you are 
wanting to to know a little bit more about what's in your area and then maybe it's after that if you're looking at something a bit more specific that you might want to um, come to DBRT as well and ask us for for what data we hold um, for whatever project or, or interest it is that you are following. Um, yeah so this information is brilliant but it's not for um, sort of making making those policy decisions um, that's that's down to the data that DBRC hold. And so what can you do? You can obviously go and look at data but I'm going to take this opportunity to um, maybe just slightly hint that everyone could also be recording as well. Um, recording is a really, really great um, thing to do, especially if you are doing some sort of community project. Even if you're starting with a really blank slate, it's great to, to start recording when there's hardly anything there and then you can see how it grows if you're running that sort of project and see how things change over time. And obviously, you know, you are very, very welcome and encouraged to send us in your records. Um, but however you record, um, we just would like to encourage you to do so. Um, there we go. So I think that's my last slide. So thank you very much. And I'm going to hand over to Tom. Uh, thanks, Jess. Thank you very much for that. Um, very useful stuff. If anyone has any questions for Jess, again, please do put them in the chat and we'll have a look at the end. Um, I'm just going to go over the two mapping uh, systems that I mentioned at the start. So that is um, Magic Map, which I'll start on. Um, and uh, hopefully you can see that. Can you see that at all? Yeah, brilliant. Um, so this is this is Magic Map here. Um, and um, basically what this stands for is uh, multi-agency -agen uh, geographic information for the countryside. So this is essentially the mapping tool um, for uh, government data, essentially. And um, uh, all, in order to get this, all, all you do is type in Magic Map into Google. If you put Magic in, you might get the radio station. But uh, Magic Map uh, takes you straight through to this map mapping system here. Um, and essentially, uh, it is, uh, as I said, it's uh, all of the sort of government uh, data put onto one map. Um, so from a wildlife perspective, um, there's the uh, designations, the national designations um, from for all over the country. So not just Devon based, obviously, but it covers the whole of Britain. Um, and um, there's plenty of different um, layers to sort of work your way through. So um, you can either find your local area by putting in your postcode uh, at the top there and it'll go straight through to your to your local area or obviously just by using the, the scroll function to, to move the map about. Um, but then there's a, a lot of different data here in terms of uh, designated sites. So both land-based designations there uh, including statutory, so they uh, your areas of outstanding natural beauty, your, your local nature reserves, your, your triple SIs, Ramsar sites, um, biosphere reserves, that sort of stuff, um, uh, and also your non-statutory designated sites. So, uh, and this is obviously the uh, at a national level. So we're talking about here uh, things are like RSPB reserves, um, drinking water protected areas. Uh, national forest um, areas throughout the whole of England. So again, um, you can click on any of these tabs here. Um, so if we go scroll down to, um, uh, let's have a look. If we go to Biosphere Reserves England, again, you just click on whatever layer you'd like to view uh, and make sure that it's ticked in the correct areas so under designations. And there you go. So there's our Biosphere in North Devon. Um, and then in order to view the point, um, you click on the I identify icon at the top uh, and just click in the middle of the uh, of the icon and it will come up as to what it is. So in this in this instance, it is our North Devon Biosphere Reserve uh, and it gives you an indication of the size um, as well. And there is some other data on there uh, for, for other areas. So, um, for example, if we just go into RSPB Reserves, Again, you use the identify function up here and you can click on the reserve and it will tell you which ones. In this case, it's the XS3 RSPB reserve. So there's quite a lot of uh, things that you can have a look at on here. 
and as I said, it's the it's the government uh, the government sort of mapping tools. So there's quite a lot of info on here that that we don't have as part of the Devon Environment Viewer, um, and that includes stuff like uh, the location of agri-environment schemes or forestry schemes. So you, again, you can have a look to see if there is any uh, sort of countryside stewardship schemes um, in your area. Um, what I should say is uh, sometimes like this, uh, you can see here that this is actually grayed out um, and that's because I'm too zoomed out on the map uh, for it to appear. So once you zoom in a bit further, it, uh, it sort of goes, it, the, the color comes in a bit, uh, as you can see for the countryside stewardship one. Um, and then you can select that layer essentially to, to see it. Um, but um, that's the idea. And again, it's, it's reliant on obviously data uh, from uh, a national level. So it is it should be uh, uh, up, up to date in that regard. Um, but there you go. I've, I've just used the uh, countryside stewardship areas. Um, and again, you can just identify whichever area that is and click on it and it details of that countryside stewardship agreement will appear uh, and you can see you know it gives you the reference and who is under the um, agreement and what type of agreement it is and how long and that sort of stuff so again some really good information um, not just on uh, uh, land designations um, but also a, a lot of uh, wildlife um, or uh, forestry schemes um, and also um, under habitats and species, there's the um, a whole list of priority species targeting areas, which are these coloured areas here, uh, but also um, European protected species licensing uh, down at the bottom here. So, so what this is, is actually there's a, a list, um, as you can see, what it will do is it will map the granted European protected species license. And again, this may be related to planning or just to give you an idea of what species have been confirmed within your local patch. Um, you, can, you can see here there's a number of bat licenses throughout Devon that have been granted. And again, you just follow the same system where you click the identify button, uh, get it in the middle of the, the icon. And again, it will tell you uh, the case reference, uh, what it's for. So brown long-eared common pipistrelle, soprano pipistrelle, and then the date of the license when it ends and, and a lot more details on that. So whilst uh, it doesn't provide the specific species records like DBRC does in terms of uh, exact locations of certain species and what has been fully recorded in your area, it does give an, un, uh, an idea of, uh, at a national level, the sort of species records that uh, nationally they're dealing with, in which case it is European protected species licensing and priority species areas um, such as that. Um, and also, again, you may have noticed that there's also uh, stuff on marine based designations as well. So um, the Water Framework Directive, uh, marine licensing from the MMO, uh, fisheries and fishing activities. So there's a whole host of different layers on here that you can have a look at uh, and to get an understanding of your, your local area uh, and, and help you uh, make some certain decisions if, if, if needs be. Uh, so that's Magic Map. Uh, again, it's, there's there's quite a few uh, layers to choose there, uh, and there's a, quite a few icons at the top here as well. So you can um, you can you can use drawing tools where you can add certain lines and figures or, or uh, text onto the map, uh, and then you just click the export button, and it basically makes the map for you. So you can use this as a base map uh, to make a, a whole load of features. So if you need to circle an area or perhaps add a label or something onto that, you can do there. Uh, there's also a measurement tool, so you can see how how far the distance is. So you just click on the uh, icon there, and you can uh, just click to, to see the distance, and it will give you a, a distance there between two points, which again is quite useful. Um, and the same for the area tool, which is on the left there, so you can see the area of a certain area um, in both meters and you know perimeter and and area in square meters or you can just change it to hectares or acres or anything like that so there's actually quite a bit you can do on this on this particular tool but um as discussed and as just pointed out it doesn't have uh sort of really locally defined data it is at a national level um so so that's magic map um and we also have as i mentioned before the Devon environment viewer um so 
that's the uh, website there for the Devon Environment Viewer, map.devon.gov.uk DCC Viewer. Um, and again, what this is, is it's uh, similar to the Magic Map, but it's a bit more locally orientated um, and um, tries to give a bit more of a, a local feel. So this is the uh, map as it loads up. Um, and uh, it can be a little bit confusing to use at the start. So in order to turn the layers on and off uh, for the environment viewer, you go to this icon here in the top right, which is called layer list. Um, if you click on that, as you can see, public access is automatically selected uh, whenever you load into the map. So you, you can just turn that one off. Um, and then there's a whole host of Devon based sort of layers to choose from. So the one obviously I use mo most frequently being the ecologist is uh, ecology and geology. So we have wildlife site data, which also includes um, our locally, uh, our local non statutory sites. So such as um, ancient woodland, county geological sites, uh, county wildlife sites, uh, our special verges as well. Um, and also other sites, which are uh, things like Devon Wildlife Trust nature reserves, uh, our valley parks and our strategic nature areas. Um, there's also some localised species data, so great crested newt consultation zones and our soil bunting consultation zones. Um, as again, as just mentioned earlier, if you if you would like a sort of list of uh, verified species records, um, then you'd, you have to go to DBRC for that sort of stuff. Um, but there is some sort of more locally generated data here. Um, and uh, there's actually quite a bit more uh, around ecology and geology, including uh, water quality. So um, quite a lot of work on our uh, ground protect, groundwater source protection zones, be, but, uh, bathing water quality, drinking water, safeguard zones, that sort of stuff. Um, and in order to select them again, you just click on the layer and make sure that the uh, master layer is selected as well. And then there you go, then it will appear here. Um, and in order to work out uh, what it is and to, to identify the uh, particular uh, layer. Uh, you don't need to click, click on an icon, you, you can just click uh, left click onto your uh, whatever layer it is or whatever feature it is on the map and uh, it will come up with information here. So in this case, this is the River X um, and it's the Environment Agency data relating to drinking water. And again, you can have a look at more information there. Um, there's also uh, historic environment data on here. So where our historic environment records are, are the location of our scheduled monuments, for example. So again, just click on the layer you want to select and then make sure the master layer up here is also selected. Um, and there we go, there's a, a whole host of scheduled monuments, um, quite a few based on Dartmoor, unsurprisingly. Um, and again, just left, left click on the polygon uh, and then it will tell you uh, what the uh, what it is. So in this case, it's the uh, DDV, uh, that number there for the scheduled monument, and that's the reason for designation. So um, quite a bit of, of information on here, not just ecology and geology, but quite a bit of um, different uh, and covering quite a wide range of topics. Um, also planning. So this only covers Devon County Council planning uh, documents in order to um, the local planning authority should have their own mapping system which cover their their, uh, their more local planning um, uh, applications but for devon county planning applications again you can uh, see what has been determined um, by devon county council uh, and the location of that uh, and again just left click on the uh, on the polygon and it gives you the the planning application number which you can then search again online uh, to find out more information um, and similarly the, the strategic areas for, for the Devon Minerals Plan and the Devon Waste Plan there as well. Uh, so yes, so that is a sort of whistle-stop tour in a way of the Devon Environment Viewer. Um, much like the magic map, you can do some measurements on here. So again, you can uh, determine the area of something or the, uh, or the length and you can get the exact location of uh, a particular point. So again, you just click on the, the icon and, and left click anywhere in the map and you get the latitude and longitude if you to ever need that sort of stuff. Um, and um, 
that is essentially, like I said, both of them are, are pretty intuitive in order to use once you work out where the where the data layer list is. Um, and um, yes, like I said, there's quite a lot of data on there to have a play about with, but it's really quite good at understanding at a sort of high level what is in your local patch. And uh, as again, as Jess mentioned earlier, to get the really localized verified data, uh, DVRC is the place to go for that. Uh, so that is my whistle stop tour on both Magic Map and the Environment Viewer. Um, and I don't know if there's any questions on that from anyone. Just having a quick look. Um, so there's one, how often do you interrogate iRecord for local records? So I assume that one's, that one's for me. Um, they've actually made it a lot easier quite recently. So um, I don't actually know the, the exact answer to that. I don't know how often. Um, I believe that it goes through their verification process first before it comes to us, um, because we don't get sort of everybody's contact details. We just get a, a lump from, um, from iRecord. I think we just get a big batch um when we can go in and, and and get those um at various intervals we probably don't think we go too often just to um you know because we're, we're all quite stretched so we go in every now and again and um take those the, the records for devon um i wish i could give you a more specific answer i'm sorry um, I think the third question is probably for you as well, Jess, actually. Um, when recording is complete, are you happy for recording to be shared with colleagues for educational purposes? So this, the, the recording of this talk? Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I think so. I think. Um, I assume that's, yes, I assume that's what you mean, Andrew. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, happy for this uh, to be shared more widely. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Um, and in terms of uh, actual data sharing, as as just mentioned earlier, there is a number of licenses that uh, mean that certain data can, can only be shared for certain reasons and can't be shared another reason. So it's always best to check with DBRC uh, when you get any data, if you can share it more widely. But yeah, in terms of this talk, yes, uh, it will be shared uh, more widely. Um, is there any other questions at all from anybody else? That was, again, that's sort of, that was sort of a, a whistle stop tour of, of data and mapping um, and what uh, is available for, for people to use. Um, as, as I said, uh, Jess and, and myself are, are happy to answer any questions that you may have via email, so please do send them to us as well if there are any questions you think of afterwards. Um, but uh, yes, that was um, sort of sort of it, if there is any further questions at all. No worries. I think I just encourage everyone to, to go to these resources and it's quite a lot to take in this evening, so um, have a look at Magic Map, have a look at the Environment Viewer, have a look at NVN and just see what, what is actually available to you there because there's so much information um, that you can get from them. Um, and then obviously DBRC are here um, for, for other needs as well. <laughs> if, if they're not on, on there, then um, hopefully we've got that data. So do, do come to us as well um, if you need to. Yes, um, fi uh, that's a very good point from Grant there, actually. Uh, I'll just share my screen again in terms of the Devon Environment Viewer. Um, yes, you can uh, change the base map. So uh, that's very useful. Thank you, Grant, for, for reminding me. Um, so under this icon in the top right next to the uh, I button is the base map gallery. So currently I have the master uh, raster color uh, map, uh, but you can also change um, to aerial photographs, um, they, because they're aerial photographs, they do take quite a bit longer to sort of um, load up. Um, but essentially what this does allow you to do is give an idea, understanding of land use over time. Um, the most recent aerial photos we have are from 2015. Um, and that is just because that is, um, I think they're done every five years, so we should be due another update relatively soon. Um, and as you can see, it's taking a little bit longer to load. But there are a number of different base maps here to to be able to have a look at in terms of land use. So uh, there's historical land use data as well, such as you know from the 1880 and 1904 OS maps, uh, but more recently as these these aerial photographs and aerial photography uh, there. So um, yes plenty of opportunities to see sort of land use change as well uh, over time. 
Uh, brilliant. And uh, like I said, as Jess said, uh, go visit both Magic Map and, and the uh, Environment Viewer and also the NBN Atlas and have a play about, see what's there. And if you have any questions, uh, come back to us and we're happy to help. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you all. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you very much for coming and good luck with all your exciting research and projects. <laughs>